My name is Mark Latterbuck. I'm from Lancaster County. And I'm here in solidarity with my brothers and sisters from Columbia. Uh, because we're all really fighting the same damn threat. Um, I guess first I'd like to add my request to extend uh, the DEIS comment period uh, for lots of reasons. One is obviously the sheer length of the document. Uh, secondly, the technical nature of this study that we're expected to become experts in geology, uh, water, and noise, and I mean, all these sorts of things as we're reading this document, uh, it's hard to do in the period you've given us. Um, and as many people have already said, said it's the incomplete nature of the studies that you depend on in the document to make the conclusion over and over again, the document says uh, the studies that we've required of Transco are incomplete, yet you, you come to a conclusion. So I don't understand that. It seems to me the study should be complete, on which you yourselves are saying the study depends, before you issue the DEIS conclusion, and then we can make comments. Uh, all right, I'd also like to tell a story about significant impacts. Uh, last year, a very close friend of our family and neighbor of ours uh, made the painful decision to sell her dream home where she raised her three children uh, when she learned that the AFP was proposed to tear through her orchard uh, about 30 yards from her children's bedrooms. Uh, soon afterward, the pipeline was actually relocated across the street from her house from the original proposed path, no longer on her property, but still easily within the blast zone. Even so, she felt compelled to escape the threat of this project uh, that opposed to her and her family and continue with the sale of her house. This life-altering decision in economic, social, and emotional terms ranks among the most significant in her life, and it's a direct response to the AFP, and that's before the project even approved. Her former dream home has now been on the market for a year. Uh, during this time, the two most serious potential buyers walked away for one simple reason, which in both cases they openly admitted was the sole cause of their decision. And that was the possibility that a pipeline would be built on an adjacent property. The possibility of a pipeline. Once again, the threat of the ASP, before the invasive construction even begins, before the light of nature and gas line and the gas has started to flow, has had a verifiable, significant, adverse impact on my neighbor. These are the facts on the ground, facts well documented by landowner after landowner, and there are hundreds of these stories along the ASP line. These are real, significant, adverse impacts. And yet FERC shamelessly maintains the ridiculous claim that the value of a rural property is in no way adversely impacted by the imposition of an industrial right-of-way containing a 42-inch explosive high-pressure gas line. Uh, a gas line for export, no less. It's a right of way imposing permanent and significant use restrictions on the landowner's property, a right of way that's owned for all practical purposes by the gas industry, since Williams would have access to that right of way 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. A right of way that nonetheless the landowner must continue to pay taxes on, while Williams makes money off that landowner's permanent risk with a landowner earning zero compensation beyond an initially resisted, coercively negotiated, one-time payout, wrangled, as we've heard over and over again tonight, through misinformation, trespassing, and well-documented pattern of landowner harassment. A right away that will almost certainly be used to build a second, possibly a third pipeline uh, in the near future, and yet you say no significant impact. I think the landowners in this county are here to tell you plainly and to your face that you were dead wrong on that assessment. Um, this whole question of significant impact, uh, and I will conclude here, uh, as again we've heard over and over again tonight, it seems to me that your conclusion uh, in the DEIS preliminary conclusion hinges on the meaning of that word, significant. Um, is that a technical term? Like, is that how? how where does that, what does it mean? What does it possibly mean? And I mean, you're looking at me, and I guess at some point, we'd actually like to hear FERC explaining what does significant mean? Our lives are turned on end, our property values are, are declining, and you, in the DEIS yourself, archaeological, architectural, water crossings, wetlands, 
preserve farms, forests, karst, explosive hazards. You list all of these, I, I think, significant adverse impacts. And then at the end you say, there are all less than significant impacts. It's meaningless, it's absurd. And at some point, are you ever held accountable for even defining the very term by which the whole study hinges? I mean, am I, am I a lunatic Be because I don't get something here? Or at what point does Wilf Wilford ever say, this line, this is the threshold for significance, and once reached, the project will be defined? Or does it just sort of always go up? Whatever the risk is, ooh, significance a little higher. Uh, I think that's just outrageous uh, and, and an absolute scandal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark.